Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught and I will be your host today. And I am joined by the incredibly talented and my good friend, Elise Swopes. Welcome, Elise. How are you feeling today? Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being the host. This is going to be so fun. I'm so happy too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I have known you for a number of years now and have always yes. loved your work and your energy and you everything too. you do. Oh, thank you. thank you. And we have lots of people popping into the chat already. Hello, Cody Bear. Hello, Robert. Hello, Fairy. Hi, Matt. Thank you for being here with us today. We're going to have an amazing stream all about video editing. And I just want to give everyone a quick reminder for those of you watching over on YouTube to come over and join us on behance.net slash Adobe Live so that you can ask Elise any questions that you may have about what she's working on or just say hi, get to know her a bit better and have some fun with us today. Also, another quick reminder, uh, be sure to check out the second week of Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges replays with Voodoo Val every day, every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So without further ado, Elise, let's dive in and check out your portfolio and all of your amazing work and have a little intro. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, you introed me pretty well already. So thanks <laughs> for that, hype man. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the live. We're going to have a really fun time today. Um, we're going to be diving into Premiere, uh, to uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, um, which I am fairly new at, but I've been testing to the extreme as a uh, Photoshopper, as an illustrator, as a um, graphic designer overall. I feel like uh, it, it does have this intuitive feeling to it. You know, when you've jumped into Photoshop and Illustrator, you kind of feel like you kind of know what um, what Premiere does a little bit. So uh, I felt like today I'm just going to show you a little bit about that. But before that, um, I'm just going to explain about who I am for those who do not know who I am. My real last name is Swopes. My name is Elise Swopes. Um, and a lot of people may call me Swoops, but it's cool, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> a lot of my friends who have known me for like years and years and years still call me Swoops, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I got my start on Instagram, well, my, my, my base, my brand, so to speak, but I, I did start creating and designing when I was nine or 10 years old. I started designing websites. Um, I owned my first website that taught other people how to design their own websites. And so as you can tell, this is my website and I designed it myself. I'm very adamant about adding things, updating it, making sure that it speaks for me and speaking to what I've done and what I, what I can do. Um, but, um, yeah, I've got a podcast. I've got a, an ebook. I just spoke at Adobe max last year, which was so, so much fun. Um, but I've worked with a ton of different brands, um, over the years and you can sign up for my newsletter as well, which I drop once a month. Um, and it's basically just a behind the scenes of me and, and a lot of secrets and, and, and stuff that I kind of go through um, versus all the other upfront things on my Twitter, on my Instagram. Um, but as far as the brands go, the brands are, are, are pretty extensive, but you know, my, my favorite brand to work with is Adobe. <laughs> um, and uh, my Instagram, if we come on over here, um, this is pretty much where I got my, my start and, and where I created my brand. I've got over a quarter million followers now. So if I, I've accumulated over the years, but I, I got my start in um, 2011 when I became a suggested user on Instagram. And the suggested user at the time was a list that came up um, right when Instagram just started popping off and millions of people are signing up. This list comes up to show people 
um, you know, what, what does an Instagrammer do and what can you create and what, is, what are the possibilities? And I was showing people those possibilities and, uh, you know, there's nothing more than, than thousands of followers a day to put some pressure on you to stay creative. So, um, <laughs> I actually, I, I was primarily creating on my iPhone four because that's all I had at the time. I was a college dropout. Um, and I mean, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, to be honest. I just knew I didn't want to be in a classroom. I wanted to be doing stuff on the streets, hang out with people, do, you know, just live in life pretty much <laughs> as a, as a, as a 20 year old or 19 or 18, whatever. Um, and so I, uh, I, I just created consistently with my iPhone and I still do that to this day, creating, um, primarily with my iPhone and editing hundred percent of my iPhone, um, other than, you know, some video projects and some other things that need to be a little bit more high quality. Um, but you know, I push the limit when it comes to, to mobile editing, but, and so, uh, with that being said, I think that that's the interesting part about me doing video is that I try to bring a lot of that surrealism into the way that I create videos. Um, and that may be with, you know, doing certain, okay, here we go. This is, I should have logged <laughs> on already. <laughs> it's not gonna let me watch my video, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know just doing certain things like so to speak so I'm, I'm just gonna pop into premiere just so i could show you what videos i'm talking about um and if you haven't seen this latest video that i uh put out it is inspired by the change to color effect that's in premiere that i'm going to be showing you today uh, among some other tips and tricks but uh let's go yeah, your your portfolio is so impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And this is uh, this was a fun day because it was very cold out, but I still I shot this in the middle of January. And I wanted to wear the specific outfit because I knew I wanted the colors to change. And we'll talk about um, the color choice actually in a little bit because it was quite a mistake on my part. <laughs> and uh, and you also know there's a there's a couple transitions there that we'll talk about as well. But um, the reason why people wear green when they're shooting video and they want to. Uh, use green screens or use you know keying and stuff like that which i think that's what's called in premiere and correct me if i'm wrong chat but that's because the green is not in anything else that's in the skin or on the lips or something whatever right so when i'm editing with this red okay and i'm like <laughs> trying to pick reds like in the whole scene it's picking my lips it's uh. picking like my <laughs> fingers so we're gonna have some fun a little bit with how I uh, <laughs> accomplished, uh, you know, defeating that uh, mistake, so to speak. But you know, in the future, I think that I'll definitely um, make sure that I wear some green. <laughs> so uh, the first step is to just drag. So oh, also, if you notice, like. Um, the title of my my clips that it says like trsh and that stands for trash and just a quick shout out to my boyfriend trash hand he's a photographer he's amazing um and he will help shoot my videos for me and i'll tell him to shoot through his camera from one angle and then we'll do our b-roll on mine so thankfully we can kind of switch back and forth i've got a good partner in crime to do that with um but You'll notice that right now I'm 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 in the the, the Adobe Premiere um, Pro program, and I am actually in the editing uh, tab here. I mean, you can click and you can change, and you'll see maybe depending on how you open Premiere, it'll it'll have a different um, setup. But for this specifically, and hopefully, hopefully me clicking on these things is not making it go crazy, but um, you'll see that this changes the way that the workspace looks. Now, I'm just gonna stay in editing because that's the, I think it's probably the most like 
basic one that I think everybody kind of starts with, I believe. Um, but it's also the easiest because you can kind of have all the basics here. So you've got the project panel here, you've got media browser, you've got the libraries, you've got all these good things. You also have effects, which is really important. And we'll use those very specifically because that's where our change to color is. And then you have all your effects controls and all your other stuff up here. There's some things I honestly do not touch because I don't need it. Um, and I think that kind of speaks to some things like when it comes to tutorials or um, some things that I, I feel like I have to learn uh, are, are maybe I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to word this right, but there's like something, so to speak, like when I'm learning a tutorial and there's so much to learn in it. And I try to just think about like the stuff that I'm going to do in my life and how that applies to it. And, um, I feel like this, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but this is like this stuff, <laughs> this stuff to me, um, fits into anybody's workflow. Um, and so, uh, there's not going to be anything in this that's 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 going to be too complicated um, or or uh, you know extra. So I'm going to try to keep it nice and simple. But on this side here, we also have the essential sound panel, um, Lumetri and color, and uh, yeah. So awesome. I'm just gonna. Hey, how are you, Anna? Sorry, just, <laughs> I just keep talking. I'm just gonna. Hey, keep no, going. go for it. I don't, I'm not gonna interrupt you or anything, of but course. you might hear me uh, cue in some little cool, sweet. Great. <laughs> I love it. I, like I said, I love a good hype man. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to drag my trash clip over here. <laughs> and this clip, uh, it has like a bunch of noise on it that I don't actually want because in the background, you'll probably hear my boyfriend going, hey, okay, one, two, three. Okay, one, okay, go. Okay, no, stop. Okay, this. So I'm just going to drag all the clips that I want to use. Um, over into this uh, panel over here, the sequence. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is just go over this and just unlink the sound because I really don't need it. Um, I mean, I could mute it, but at the end of the day, it's just one more uh, layer for me that I, I feel like overcomplicates my process. So I'm just gonna keep it cute and just delete the whole thing. Now, my concept with this video, when you notice, like there's a lot of transitions um, from here, there's, it, it, it kind of like starts from the, the sky and comes down. And that something to me was very important because as you can tell in this, I think it's in the title of even this live, uh, we're gonna be talking about loops. And for me, loops is, or, or creating loops is something that keeps people intrigued and in tune with what uh, you're trying to accomplish. Um, and that doesn't mean you always have to have a loop, you know, but for me, most importantly, when it comes to creating like a short video, I feel like having a loop kind of like keeps uh, the person watching it um, instead of it kind of ending a little bit more abruptly. And especially when we have like TikToks and reels and all these, these short video um, things, you know, being so popular, I feel like that, you know, dominating that loop space is, is super key and it's not hard. It's super simple. So um, even mimicking um, a certain movement to, to begin and end a certain frame will definitely boost your video and make it a little bit more fun. So you'll see here that it starts off kind of from the top, comes in and I kind of catch it. And then in the end here, we actually come in and I kind of like hit it mm. down. <laughs> so we're That's kind of playing perfect. with the, you know what I'm saying? So we're, we're kind of playing with this concept of, of just space and, in, in movement, um, which can seem complicated like in the long run. But uh, when I finally started understanding video and certain cuts and, and studying those things, I was like, man, that's, it just takes putting it like on a piece of paper or, or taking a pen and a piece of paper and just conceptualizing it a little bit to make it make sense. Um, so I've got my clip here. 
And it's a little shaky, obviously, but I want to make sure that I start it right where it kind of comes. So I'm going to ripple delete and ripple deleting. And I probably did that really quick, but you'll see I've, I've got a whole tool selection here and I've got a razor tool here and I'm going to gra grab this dragger here and you'll see it's kind of shaky right at the beginning. So I'm just going to play it. And there's no reason to keep that extra couple frames. And if I wanted to actually, and they're probably gonna, they're probably gonna want me to do this to be honest with you. Now this is a little bit easier mm. to see. And I, <laughs> I kind of <laughs> messed myself up a little bit because I, I do not use that quite often. And I, and I, and I'm known actually to make my, my process much more difficult for myself for some reason. Just I, feel I don't you. know why, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, whatever, <laughs> um, just to do it quick and just get out and get it, you know, but um, I think that this will definitely help you if you're looking for that. So right here on the side here, there's this little um, drag thing that you can kind of come up and down. So yeah, that's super thinking, helpful. Isn't it? Yeah. Would it, if I did this whole thing like that, they would have been like, what are you doing? <laughs> Now they're very nice. I'm okay. the same way. I always <laughs> end up making everything more difficult for myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we learn, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Okay. So even in this bottom here, you could see that this is kind of like dragging the clips in and out. So I'm just coming and zooming in basically on each frame. So if I wanted to like come in as much as possible, I could come into increments of every frame that's in this shot, but we don't want to do all that because that's just too much right now. So the only way I would probably do that detailed is if I'm like masking something. Um, but with this, we're just going to keep it cute, keep it light. So I'm just going to start off a little bit right when it starts moving. And then I'm going to right click. I've got a nice little mouse over here that's super nice for editing um so i can right click quick and hit ripple delete and that definitely helps i've edited quite a bit on a trackpad which can be done it can be done i do yep. it like we've been talking about we like to make it difficult on ourselves <laughs> and if i want to watch a movie like in my living room yes i'm editing on a trackpad like i don't care if i'm like if i'm trying to like hang out with my boyfriend or just eat or whatever like i will edit a video on a trackpad just because it's convenient at that time but um other than that i you know i'm super mouse gang so i've got my <laughs> clip here mouse gang i love that mouse gang you hear me <laughs> so it's coming in we've got the video now one thing um about this video is it is fairly dark and I'm going to help uh, lighten it up a little bit in Lumetri color in a sec after we kind of get this cut here. I'm going to do another ripple delete. <laughs> That's that face. So cute. Thanks, Sam. Okay, so, okay, so I caught it. Okay. Now, now let's go back to this clip. I'm not, I'm like already getting into the cutting of the, the transitions, but I just want to get real back into this clip real quick, just so we can do some Lumetri color edits to it now. One thing I wonder, and this is something I might even bring up just out of um, a lesson. Now, what I could do is edit this clip alone and go into Lumetri here. This is what I've been talking about, this Lumetri color panel. And it's got all these basic corrections. We've got creative controls. We've got curves. We've got a lot of fun stuff. Color wheels, HSL, vignettes. I can even do some, um, where are they at? Where are they at? Here we are. We got some looks. I got a lot of looks, mm. a lot of looks. Now those are LUTs, you can download them or create them yourself, um, put them in a folder on your computer and they're basically filters for your video. But I'm only saying all of this because now what I can do, you see this, this, this is kind of dark or whatever and I wanna balance it out, but maybe the other clips that I have can be a little, they're, they're just, maybe they're just as dark. 
and I want to edit them all at the same time. So instead of me just like editing this one clip, I'm just going to wait a second <laughs> as you're learning with me in real time. I'm just going to wait a second and cut these clips so the transitions match. And then I'm going to do a new layer over all of those to see if I could edit them all at once. Okay, just so we can make it a little bit easier on ourselves probably. Yeah, like that would help. Perfect. So let's do that. So now I'm just gonna cut these clips again. And, and the same thing he did with this one is instead of going down, we just did a smack to the right or left or whatever it is. And then we're gonna grab another smack to the left. Or I'm actually, actually, I'm just gonna catch the smack with the with the palm. Yes, boom. Mm. Okay. So I just definitely want some motion there. Do another ripple delete. Let's see if she matches up. A little quick on the edge, but not bad. Yeah. See, that was, a little, that was a lot quicker, but I feel like what happened here is maybe, and I believe this is what this is. So there's a tool here, track select forward tool, or is that what it says? It's track, track select forward tool. Okay, yes. So I want to pull this other track a little bit, select it. I want to, no, okay, let's hope that it does it. <laughs> I want to pull I want to pull it out a little bit so that I grab some seconds back from that clip so that it looks like it's actually spinning back because I feel like we lost a little bit of that motion. Let me get back in here. Select, select, pull it, pull it. Okay, maybe it's not going to do it for me, but we'll pull this. Pull this back. All right, maybe it'll look a little bit more. I think I need a little bit more to be honest with you. Is this ripple edit tool? Is this the one? I think this is the one. Maybe this is the one I need. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. What yeah. is this called? This is the ripple edit tool. Okay, so this is, this is if we wanna pull the track a little bit farther from where we cut. Now that's a little bit too far. Pull her back. And how that's gonna help is instead of just using the selection tool, like say for instance, if I wanted to just pull this out and pull it, it's not gonna kind of really let me obviously because there's another track behind it. But if I even wanted to pull this up or even pull this, I'm just gonna be cutting it pretty much. So the easiest way to, to kind of pull that track is to use that ripple tool there. Okay, let's see. Okay, see, yeah, that was a yeah. that was a lot better. That was a lot. Better. Oh yeah, much better. You know, we've got a little bit of motion there. Now, also, bring up a lot of things because I get excited about it. But I'm also <laughs> gonna show you how because you'll notice, like maybe, hopefully, you notice that there's like some shake to this clip. Um, the clip is a little shaky and we're just going to use a, a warp stabilizer to make sure that it's not as shaky as it is, but, um, that'll be a little later. Cool. So let's go through this clip, clip, clip. We know, we know. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to change colors. All right. And we're walking and we're thriving <laughs> and we're living. And our best lives. Boom. Exactly. So, you know, initially in this clip, I had a few other clips I was going to connect this to. What I was going to do is I was going to connect it to a pole in a different scene. Mm. But instead, I didn't like where that other scene was because the background color wasn't as 
solid as this yellow is in this one in the next scene and I couldn't change color I couldn't change the color right it was just causing me a lot of ruckus so what I did was I had this like b-roll of me like walking with my shoes and I don't know why I had it but I'm so glad I had it because it was a nice segue into this next clip so to speak so um, instead of me using this pole as the transition into another scene or um, wherever, I just kind of used my feet as the next transition. So down and we're gonna cut again, ripple delete. And one thing I think is happening is there's this nice little space here. So let's just bring this, and this is where we wanna use our track select. So this is gonna take that whole track Bring it up even with that other clip that was in the back so that's where that works but let's see where that clip ends we want to make sure that there's a forward motion and this is why i i like to work with a lot of video because there's just so much like story to be told. There's so much more like space, detail and fun stuff to play with. And I totally. love working, right? Like I just love working with like the, I don't know, the opportunity to just see what, 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 what can happen with it. So I'm just gonna, so this is what's happening in my mind right now. So I'm kind of going back and forth to this clip and you'll, you'll see me going like here, here, here a little bit of time. This is just because I'm mapping it out in my mind where my feet are landing like in this last clip and this is how detailed i get so i can notice that my foot or if i wanted to i might be able to cut it hitting that left foot if i wanted to because i know that in this clip it starts with that left foot or i know it's ending with the right foot here boom and so i could cut it from this left to this right here there's a lot of options, you guys. This is how this is where we can get. No, I'm just kidding. This is. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get say. completely stuck on which foot to edit, right? You know, <laughs> this is where this is where we we waste our two hours, everybody. I know. Um, but no. So honestly, I mean, this is how detailed you can get, though, and 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 at least you want to make sure that the vision that you're trying to accomplish makes sense in each you know piece of the puzzle that you're trying to create so you know as much as this this foot situation is kind of silly i think it is something that makes your your viewers like in keep in, intact with the story so that they're not distracted by something that doesn't make sense definitely yeah, it makes it just feel natural. And we're so mm -hmm. used to seeing movies where people have put so much time into details like this, which foot is stepping, where you're just, right. you're so used to it. You don't notice it. You're just right. watching for the entertainment. And that's what you want this to feel like as well. 100%. See, it feels like the left is maybe more dominant with this one. So I'm going to do left. Because I feel like it. Do another ripple delete. And let's see if it looks kind of like I'm walking still. And I'm doing this little backward motion because in this little backward, I do the same kind of little backward thing here. So I wanted to make sure like we always talk about that same kind of step, even though I'm in a completely different scene. Um, and I think I may be filming my feet at this rainbow thing, but if you notice in the background, it's in a, a completely different area of it, so to speak. But, um, you know, you could be in a completely different space and still match the motions and that can still bring and, and tie those different clips together. So I just want to make sure that I'm step, step, step. And maybe I turn here. And I'm just going to clip that because then I can come to this clip here and start it right back off where I kind of fall back on that foot. And hopefully maybe the foot matches, but if it doesn't. <laughs> oh, it kind of does. Oh, it kind of does. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
a a a yeah it's so fun bad. watching it back to see if it worked it's like <laughs> i know it worked it worked <laughs> oh, you know honestly that's oh it's like that's half the fun of creating videos like well, but also the like terrifying part because i've had video ideas where i'm like yes this is going to turn out it's going to work this is going to be fantastic and then you get back in your chair and you edit and you're like oh my god this is not it. Yep. <laughs> but with this one, I remember sitting down, I remember editing it. I remember going to my boyfriend's office and I was like, babe, yo, this worked out. Oh my God. I'm so like, I'm hyped. What? Like I, was, I couldn't even, I, I, man, I was just speechless. And I'm still so happy that this worked out the way it did. Cause it's, it was like something that I had like really thought about for a while. I was like, how can I play with Premiere Pro in a way that I haven't ever done before? Have some fun in New York. But also like, I don't know, just just teach people something, you know, yeah. like most importantly, like make it easy, make it accessible. And I think that this was this was like it. And I'm just like, I don't know, I'm like so proud of myself. Yeah. I mean, patting myself on the back for that one. I'm patting you on the back as well. It's <laughs> came, it came out awesome. And I, I think it just like, it's so cool when a project comes together and you can really see it working and clearly Thank see you. that you're excited about it. it. It makes it that much better. Yeah. And plus, I mean, there's so many, I, I've been watching so many people who are so good at video for years on Instagram and, um, you know, it's, it, and especially just having so many ideas and not being able to to make it happen, I think has always been a difficult thing. But I think um, the more I, I open myself up to Premiere Pro and seeing that it's not as scary and it's not as difficult as I thought it was before, the, the sky's the limit with how much more I conceptualize ideas and projects and things that I want to do. Like I... I don't, I, I don't know. There's so much like ideas and certain projects that I wouldn't have considered before that now I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. Cause I could do that in premiere. <laughs> Absolutely. It's nuts. So there's something happening right now where at the beginning of this video, there's like a little space. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and pull this up because we just don't want that to be an issue. in at some point, and that has been an issue that's, you know, for me, um, is just not seeing the tiniest little frame you know, that's not covered. And that could, that is like one little flicker of a black screen, you know, when you mm -hmm. export your, your video. So that can be really annoying. Um, but in this little bottom thing, this is program up here. We've got our clips replaying and there's an option right here. It's called loop playback and you may need to add it if you don't have it. Um, in Premiere, and there's like a little button here. It's like a little plus sign it says button editor. If you click that, we've got all these little different options as far as how to play back your video, what you want to do, stuff, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of things in here that I do not know what they do, but I'm sure we could figure <laughs> it out someday, but not today. So um, <laughs> what I did is I made sure to add the loop playback because that allows uh, my, my video to play back uh, when I'm playing it back so that I can kind of see how that loop's going to work. Now, we want to make sure that obviously that loop makes sense at the end. And it seems like it goes down pretty quick, but it also feels like it doesn't. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more and make sure I feel like this is the extent of it. I don't think we need to go any further than that. So let's just see if that matches back up. And boo. Yeah, that was yeah. it. Woo. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got a match, everybody. Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> oh, we're cooking. We're cooking. And we're looking. We're cooking and we're looking. All right. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Okay. Nice transition. You guys, we did that. We yeah. did that together. Together. Teamwork. <laughs> Let's hope the other ones work. <laughs> and we're going to do a little walk. Do a little walk. And if you haven't noticed, maybe you have noticed the, the shakiness of the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's happy because she's going to be changing colors in a bit. <laughs> Yes. Ooh. Yes. So good. Yay. Call me young transition. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. All right. 
I don't know what else to do now. What else do we do? We're done. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah, so that's now <laughs> it's a wrap folks. <laughs> um, so we were talking a little bit about uh, editing this full clip because, you know, it's a little dark, at least in my opinion. I mean, and especially for some people's opinion in the way that they may edit video, it seems that there's a lot of contrast here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unclick all these things because what I've noticed is if I have like a, a frame or a sequence or something clicked, when I go up to file here and new, um, I can't do an adjustment layer. So what I want to do is unclick everything, file new, adjustment layer, that's where our option comes up. And this adjustment layer is going to default um, to, the, to the size of our video. And that's fine. If you want a different, you want something, you know, change it up a bit. Wouldn't suggest it unless you want to, but I'm going to keep it the way it is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drag that adjustment layer. Now it's in the projects here, but it just looks like a black screen uh, because it, right now it's really not anything. But I'm just going to drag it over the entire timeline here am i calling is this a, is this a timeline is this a sequence is this something i think timelines right i respect that yeah i like that all right so we've got our adjustment layer on our timeline and we all are going to go into the basic correction here and um i mean the temp's not too bad it's a nice cool happy day i don't think we need too much different of tint but my issue maybe is in the highlights um let's go back to that dark darkest tone here nope let's not do highlights let's just bring her back down there for a sec let's do either the shadows and now you can see that real quick mm. how much the shadows just lifted changes the whole thing and it can also i wouldn't do now this is the thing i wouldn't go into the the blacks very much because this is going to change like the contrast of a lot of the way the blacks look like on on the screen so i would personally only just kind of mess with the shadows right now because that's kind of where our issues lie um and you could also come into the curves. I'm a little nervous with curves. I don't understand them that well, <laughs> but I feel like I, I mess feel, with yeah. them. <laughs> like, and I have, you know, my whole life. I'm like, well, they're there, you know. And in <laughs> photography, I know they're very important and, you know, whatnot. But but here- I don't know I'm why like, they're so scary. They're just like very intimidating. They just do so much so quick, yeah. you know? And then you go into the reds and you're like, whoa. <laughs> like I don't even go into the color ones because that's just like you're t you're going into another whole entire world like for that's real another like you're going to Mars because <laughs> you don't even look like human anymore <laughs> yeah um but yeah you can play with the curves um and you could tell you know things are changing and stuff in there but um I think the biggest thing though we want to make sure is you can see that I'm I guess I'm editing this uh clip here and, and it's going fairly well because the I mean it's great it looks so much brighter you can see you know a lot more detail but we've edited this clip as well and I don't really see too much of a difficulty here either I think the edits that we made to the other clip does justice to this as well um as far as the details go. And then let's check out some other ones. Now, this one seems a little bright, to be honest with you. Now, I'm concerned that we may need to cut mm. that adjustment layer where we meet here because we might not need to do the shadows as harsh. Now, you'll notice, see that shadow was a lot lifted here because it worked on those other frames but i double clicked and this will go this will make it go back to zero see i double click there um this will make it go back to zero and then maybe turn on the highlights a little bit and it may even be like pretty bright here so maybe i could turn down 
No, the exposure will be too, it's a little too much. You just boost the shadows and do the opposite probably. Robzilla's in the chat and <gasps> Robzilla. Uh, <laughs> he said it's pretty quiet in the chat right now and that we gotta they gotta put me to work. I agree. Let's oh, hear man. let's hear some praise for Elise on what she's working on. Are yeah. you guys liking this right now? Are you uh are you digging the adjustments that she's doing? Are you digging kind of the whole vibe? Let us know your thoughts. Let's have a little color party. I already know when I'm learning a lot, I'm quiet. I know. I'm like fully immersed in this. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm hosting. <laughs> it's so I funny. I'm like getting so sucked into it. <laughs> I'm also a really good teacher, to be honest. Like, I feel you are. like, honestly, my dream when I was younger, I was like, I would love to be like a sixth grade teacher for some reason. Yeah. I just always thought like sixth grade was like the perfect. I wanted to decorate my classroom. I wanted to like have kids like come into after lunch. And they'd be like happy and I'd give them like, you know, stickers and stuff. Like I was hyped. I know. But then I started re like after I got out of middle school, I was like, no, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Although there's still a big part of me that like maybe someday after I'm like retired from my art career that I might mm -hmm. want to become like an art teacher or something. Yes. I feel like that would be so fun, like elementary school and mm -hmm. doing like macaroni projects and stuff. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I might retire to be a teacher, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm really going fun. to get my doctorate. You are? I'm going back to school. Yeah, I'm going for psychology. Oh my God, feel, congratulations. Well, thank you. You know, what's crazy is the school that I dropped out of, um, they gave me life credit because I accomplished so much outside when I dropped out that they gave me credits for my courses. And oh, so wow. now I get to finish my, um, the, 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 my, uh, what is, what is before the master's? <laughs> bachelor's. And I get to finish my bachelor's so that I can get my master's and then eventually get my doctorate. So ah, that's amazing. We'll see what happens. Yeah. When are you starting that? I don't know. Maybe fall, hopefully. Whenever cool. they like get done with all the paperwork, they were like, congrats, you're in. We need to do a lot of stuff first. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's great. Okay. So <laughs> Um, I forgot that we're on live again. We were just chit chatting like friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know lots to this catch is up what on. We do. This is how we're, we're just hanging out, learning, chit chatting. Um, okay, so now we've got, um, I've got my edit. I feel like this, this is good because I'm gonna put like a filter in it at the end, and I feel like this. Looks you know, we can go back to the curves here. Oh, and I think that's where it's getting. Mm. Yeah. See, that's where it was getting a little iffy. And I think that's here too. Let me go back here. Yep. We want to make sure our little guy is over the clip so that we can see which one we're editing. Because what I've realized is that you can click a clip and you may not be over it and viewing it, but you may be editing it. So mm -hmm. make sure that you can see your clip while you're editing it. And it's also, oh, you know, you're, it's that little guy thing. He's over it. And, um, I don't know what this, I'm calling this thing a little guy now here. <laughs> <It's a> little, <laughs> blue thing. <laughs> I like that. I think that's the perfect name for it. <laughs> little blue guy. Little blue guy. Um, but yeah, he's doing his job. So that's cool. But yeah, so I think, I think what I just did with this curves definitely helped us a lot because that was looking real bright here. And this one looks, looks good. I can see my good face. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to have some fun now. Now we're going to yeah. get into the color change. I know this is all you've been waiting for. Come on. The party's here. I'm so the excited. The moment has arrived. <laughs> now I'm really going to be quiet. So I'm going to be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here we are. And I'm gonna I'm gonna like zoom in, like get in there because I want to be as as detailed as possible about where I snap because that's where the color change occurs. Now I'm gonna bloop 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 bloop, and I think it may be there. Let's see, let's get it even more. Uh, yeah, it's like right, it's like right. 
there. I think it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> I'm like so excited that I'm like, okay, how do we do this? Okay, so yeah. this is what I'm gonna do. I'm because I want to simplify my process. I'm just gonna cut this clip and make it separate so that I can drag this color change effect over just this clip instead of the rest of that other clip. Um, just to, you know, ne you never know. Maybe later, maybe make things easier. At least it does for me. I like to simplify things, break it down, make it yeah. detailed. So now I'm gonna go into video effects. And we're gonna go to, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> either immersive video or <laughs> so, something <laughs> type it in or something. change to color <laughs> okay here it is it's an obsolete okay <laughs> so we've got so now we're in our effects tab all over here right or in our our is it called a tab I, i'm gonna go with tab here yeah and we've got a bunch of stuff um Nice part is you could you could see since I couldn't find the actual effect that I was looking for, that I could type it in here. So you can type in a, an effect, you know, if you want to look for it, if you already know it, or if you're doing a tutorial or something, or just looking for something specific to do. Um, but or 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 else you can just kind of click through and, and test things out. As I always say, we have a redo and an undo option for a reason. Yes. So depending on your system, of course, <laughs> <laughs> click and drag and see what things do. Um, and I'm in audio effects and we're not really playing with audio quite yet. But if you go into video effects here, you'll see that there's just a ton of different options. I uh, can just adjust things. You can do some blurs. Now I am a big fan of Gaussian blur um just because i like to play with perspective in my own mm -hmm. photoshop work um and i'm sure you know all about that too right yeah it's yeah, also one like, of my favorites as well yeah that's like yeah that's a designer's like favorite tool yeah. somehow some way always got to be involved yeah um, and, and so having that even in like video video you know opportunities i think is, is really fun really cool and doesn't limit me to what i can think of and what's possible and even limits like what I already know to do. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Fun that's in there. Um, also having distort you can do the warp stabilizer like we're going to be talking about in a bit just to, to kind of tidy up the video. Um, and then lots of other fun stuff. But we're going to go to obsolete. And we've got all these other fun stuff, but we're just going to do change to color. I'm just gonna drag it on this clip here. You'll see, I'm just gonna pick it up, drag it right on that clip. And effects controls up here gives me all these stuff. I mean, it just looks like a lot of things, but when it really comes down to it, it's fairly simple. Now this here is how you move your video or move your frame. Hmm. But I don't really need to do that right now. Or you can scale it if you want to change the size. Okay. Or you can rotate. Ah. Right? Or this is where you can create a mask as well. So if I wanted to mask a clip or do something kind of fun, um, which I may need to show you in a second, only just in this change to color. Um, but that is a fun tool to use uh, that we will be talking about in our next video. Mm. Make sure you stay tuned. Yeah, um, for tomorrow. Yeah. So this one is fun because it's very, very intuitive, straight to the point. Now you'll see here we've got a from and a to. Um, and change, change by, got all types of different different options here and I'll run you through all of them once we see how they work but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do change from and maybe I'll and, and you'll see I'll click this little eyedropper here and the first time you may use Premiere it may have a pop-up on your computer that 
that you need to allow security settings um, for Premiere to record your screen or to pick a color from your screen. That has come up for me uh, just the first time I opened it, but it hasn't come up since then. So um, this allows me to, you know, pick a color from kind of anywhere. And then I would like to change it to that uh, look. Look at this lip. <laughs> See, I'm looking real clownish right now, okay? And this is it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it gets complicated real quick. See, this is this is why we've been talking a little bit about the fact that, you know, we need to make sure that we only use certain colors in our clothes because, um, you know, using reds, I think, is um, very hard because it's, it's in our skin. I mean, we have, you know, just red tones and, and yeah and everything and so it's it's hard and so I, i'll show you a little bit of how i masked masked it out um a lot but we won't spend too much time on doing that because i know it'll it'll it takes a little bit but um but yeah i'll show you how that's done but so now you can see very quick and it'll and it'll follow it through the whole clip it's there. amazing right Quick question for you yes. before we move on from mm -hmm. Matt asking, um, is there a way to know if the effect was applied to the video? Is there a symbol or something? Um, there is, yes. So there is uh, a, well, what I'm seeing personally, and I'm not entirely sure if it's right or not, but there's like a red line above the clip up there, which I am assuming may mean that there is some kind of I don't know there's something either happening or not happening but mm. that's not the point so the uh, the real point is is that i think because there's a if you look at the fx um on the name of the clip where the 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 clip video or the clip preview is on the timeline there's like a purple fx that fx visually is telling you on the timeline that there's an effect down there now if you go to the effect controls on the left all the way over here there is going to be an fx symbol there that says change to color and if i go to say you know for example this other clip before it you'll notice mm. that that's not there anymore okay and it almost and looks that, like it, it almost looks like it's um, lit up. The FX is lit up. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So this, yeah, it's, there's, yeah, it's lit. It's not got something doesn't, you know, there's a little color here. There's not. So there's, there seems to be some symbolism across the board there. If you pay attention and on, on what, uh, what is there and what's not. Perfect. All right. So we've got our blue here. Okay, and so now what I wanna do is, is just show you a little bit of different um, options that you have. Now you can change by the hue or you can change the hue and the lightness. You can change the hue and saturation or you can change the hue, lightness, and saturation. Those are different, <laughs> <laughs> different things that can happen. And it's kind of cool, like it's depending on what you want to do it kind of makes me it's like that you know that music video when people were like drawn and it was like yeah oh, like that it reminds me of that where you can kind of have this fun I don't know like drawn kind of weird perspective like that and it's not for me here specifically so but like cool. it's something that someone could have fun with yeah it looks like you're like a little paper doll or something yeah <laughs> for sure um, and then there's also change by setting to color or transforming to color, which, um, you know, I don't really know the difference, but you can kind of see there, there's like a slight change. So this is setting to color and this is transforming to color, which I think there's some kind of blending difference or something. Um, and that worked in certain uh, clips for me, but with this one, it didn't work out so well. Um, so underneath all of these options, we've got a tolerance and the tolerance here, you can change the hue here. So you'll notice that if I bring it all the way up, I am in the Charlie and the chocolate factory. <laughs> I'm the blueberry, um, <laughs> which I don't yes. I like blueberries or I can turn it all the way back down and I'm back to normal. 
Um, so you can just kind of see what the increments are going to do, uh, you know, little by little. You'll see this one is giving me quite a bit of hard time with my lips. So that was fun. Um, so what I would, what I had to do, and I'm just going to walk through this real quick, but here's another a little few options. You can change to lightness, which I don't think makes quite a difference here, considering the way that this hue is set up. But yeah, so you can change the saturation. Like I said, it doesn't really make a difference here, the way it's kind of set up, but it'll do its thing. Also, the softness matters on these edges a little bit, I've noticed. Um, I'm gonna make the edges a little softer, a little bit more harsh. I just kept it at zero, just so it looks more legit. But um, there's also another trick that I used to, to make sure that, um, so you can notice there's like kind of, and I'm zooming in here, but you'll notice there's like a red, small oh, red yeah. outline there. And the way that I kind of, um, Kind of defeat that a little bit and this is just my trick is i just copied the change to color and i pasted it and then i um use the eyedropper to like select the darker red and now it's like selecting like a purple or something but maybe like get it a little bit closer okay now it's not gonna let me do it but i just wanted to make sure it was like a little darker red and that, I feel like if I did that a couple different times, it would really pull out those edges. You'll see that they're kind of gone. Oh, yeah. I think that's only because I did a hundred. <laughs> Let's see if it'll, if it'll work. But I think what, okay, so this is also something I'm not gonna do. So I'm gonna delete this because we have to do our mask first off my face. But I was just gonna show you real quick, just the edges very quickly. We're yeah. gonna do that same kind of duplicate um, again, because I do want to just fix up those edges a little bit. So I've got some makeup on, what a, what a great face I have <laughs> now. It seems all fun and games, but unfortunately I would like it to be a little less that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do um, a mask here and I'm just gonna do um, the free draw because that means I can kind of come around my head here. And just draw around the chin. Drawing around the face, the hair. And the, some of the hair can be blue. That's fine. Okay, so yeah. you'll notice it's good. It's just like <laughs> my face. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click invert right here. And now my face is free. Yay. It's free. My hands are a little iffy, but if you get the gist of my face, I hope you get the gist of my hands. So, because yeah. that's a whole, <laughs> the whole other story. And see, guys, don't be like me. Don't wear red in your video when you're trying to do change your color. Get a green suit, get a green jacket, get a green something. Make it easier on yourself because I promise you it's going to be like, oof, it's going to be like butter. Yeah. Be like butter. <laughs> okay, so we're. We've got my mask on. And this is funny. I have a mask on my face digitally. It's good for the skin. It's good for the pores. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, okay. So what's happening here is you'll notice that if I play this clip, it's only going to stay mm. there, right? Oh, man. Oh, fun. And this is why I was talking about, you know, we want to maybe sometimes get so deep in these frames that we just want to zoom all the way in there. Well, this is one of those times. And I'm just going to run you through this very quick, okay? Now, this is a, a quick intro into masking. And oh, 
God bless you if you if you're here with me. Okay. So <laughs> this is a very this is like my this is the hardest possible way for me what I think. Okay. So I um you want to make sure that you toggle this animation thing here because when you toggle this animation path, boom, you see this? There's a little blue thing that comes up here. This is a keyframe. And these keyframes are basically where your mask is going to move or be or like be in that frame, right? So for example, I'm in this frame right now, just this one frame, and my mask is right here in this area. And now it's keyframed or you know, right here. So if I go to this next frame, I'll notice that there's some red under my chin. Now if I move this a little bit farther up to my chin you'll notice and i'm going to zoom in here very on this left hand side notice there's two little little like diamonds so to speak um and you'll see how it that the key for or the the mask changed a little bit on my face this mm. is masking in video it's tedious it's painful but it's fun once you figure it out so would you have to go <laughs> you would have to go frame by frame on that then well maybe now if your face is in a good spot for a while it's not moving around a lot unfortunately mine is which makes this a little bit hard there is an opportunity here to mask a path that looks you know similar i guess um and so if i press this little play button here and i think if i well let me drag this out a little bit so you can see the tools here but there's a tracking method here that um will track the object that i have selected and i believe this is some kind of technology by adobe i don't know if it's sensei i think it is maybe it is hopefully i really like sensei technology it's mm -hmm. great um but this makes it easier so that we just have we don't have to be in every frame dicking and clicking um you know and so yeah, i'm gonna click track selected mask forward and let's see what happens there's some progress there's things happening oh, oh my god eek <laughs> okay so oh. you'll notice it just brought me all the way to the end of the clip and that's fine that's great but then there's the mask that <laughs> there's the mask okay so it's it's done some stuff we don't even know where it's been uh -oh, okay okay so see look at that yeah oh, but it's done enough because what happened is you notice that my face you know moved and it, it just like kind of lost it there and so I think that's kind of where it got confused. If my face would have kind of stayed and, and, and did its thing, I think it, I think it would have worked out a lot better. But so that's where this helps because, oh my gosh, it just like saves us so much time. Yeah. You know, and you could do the same kind of thing with the next clip. Um, you know, if you wanted to delete these, these frames here, if I wanted to start back here. I can highlight so that's, all of these. That's the track path feature. Is that correct? That is the track selected mask forward track in the mask path and change to color in the effects controls. Okay. People are, <laughs> people are asking about, um, just using track path, which, uh, chat, if you can, uh, Robert, I see you're asking about that. If you can, let us know if Elise is on, if that's the same thing or if there's something different. Yeah, I feel I'm like curious there's about this track path. Yeah. There's always a million ways to do a similar type thing in all of these programs. So I don't know if we're no, kind of help on me, the help right me. path. Okay. <laughs> I like it. All right. Well, now we know, hopefully we figure out an easier way. If you guys can be an easier way, God bless you. Okay, let's go back over here and do one more change. Or no, let's do, let's do a few more change of color. Yeah. Why not? We'll just do this one. I'll show you. This one's a lot easier than that last one. 
So I'm gonna go back in here and you'll notice I have a little seat and that's when it changes. So like plop. <laughs> plop. And then I'm just gonna do my another change to color again, drag that on the clip. And you'll see we've got our change here. So you'll notice, I'm just gonna do that real quick again. Even in this effects controls on the left, you'll see how quick it changes. So if I'm dragging this change to color, also look at that clip on the timeline, how there's this little change that occurs, it goes purple. And then we have our little change over here. So I'm gonna change this yellow. Ooh, and it already changed. Mm. It already changed to red because I think it. I think it pulls from what I've already edited before because I've done this a million times. Um, but I think if someone else did that, I don't know if it would change to red. To be honest with you, but yeah, um, I'm just gonna do the two anyway to that red that I've got there. Um, and yeah, that. I mean that. That makes it real easy. Boom. You'll notice that, I mean, the fun part is, is that there's not much yellow in my skin or many other places. And so thankfully, um, this one's a lot easier and I could play with the hue a little bit because I noticed that there is some yellow here on the edge there, um, right below where my feet are. So maybe I just want to bring that hue up a little bit and you could tell that also comes around those edges so see how it was a little different there's a little yellow edge here and mm. now if i go to 20 no more yellow edge nice so i'm just gonna do a little fit to frame so i could see what i'm doing okay let's watch that back real quick let's hope it matches up and blow and she has no idea until now. Oh my gosh, crazy <laughs> colors. <laughs> she's so excited. Yeah, but she does not care because she's gonna keep walking. She likes color. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Okay, so um, get the gist of the change to color. Thankfully, um, maybe we could play around one more. Let me know if anybody wants to do one more, but uh. Hopefully, um, it makes quite a bit of sense. And hopefully, also, we have an easier way to track my face because God knows. Yeah. Robert said, if you've seen the Hover video on the AE tutorial, they talked about track path. Mm. I, don't, I don't know much about Robert, that. That does not help me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, if, if there's a way we can Appreciate do it you, buddy. today here in premiere right now right now right. right that now. would be perfect yeah that would be awesome okay guys so i don't know if you noticed or not but i've been talking a little bit about the fact that um the video is a little wonky a little wobbly for my taste at least this one there's some wobbliness in the intro um but I'm going to defeat that. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over to video effects. I'm going to do transform. No, I'm not. I'm going to do, <laughs> where is this at? Why can't I remember any of these things? Let's go back to effects. Uh, warp stabilize. Okay, it's in, dif it's in dis distort, okay? So when you go into video effects in distort, and we've got warp stabilizer. Now, I'm gonna drag it all the way to my clip that I want stabilized. And it's gonna start analyzing my clip in the background. And when it's analyzing my clip, basically it's checking out all the frames, checking out what it can do, what it can't do, what it's nece what's necessary in this clip to make it look um, smooth and make it look like it's either on like a trackpad or on a, um, a physical stabilizer if someone's holding with a camera attached. Um, and once it's stabilized, it's going to just give you the clip ready to go. So maybe it looks a little better. It looks so much more smooth there. Oh, but now the problem is, and this is where the issue lies, everybody. Okay, see what happened here? 
Now, I'm going to go into this clip and hopefully it'll give me the information that it's scaled to. But it's scaled to 107.1. And because I cut my next clip, because I wanted to add that extra change to color. And this is also where I, someone's gonna be like, this is why you don't cut clips. This is where, <laughs> and also why you should probably warp stabilize before you do your, your um, you know, edits and stuff like that, which mm. I probably could have done, but it just takes a little bit. And I felt like it was really simple. So I was like, meh, what was doing last? Yeah. Um, but anyway, my trick for this is if you do have it cut and you want, and you'll notice that because the clips are different and, um, it seems to be like this one's not stabilized. I'm just going to do another warp stabilizer on this and hope that it matches it. But if it doesn't, I look back at, back at that framing and match it to 107.1, which the warp stabilizer before analyze the frame and thought that was right. So sometimes it might analyze two separate clips and it may not um, match them. I hope this makes sense, but that's, that's yeah. just something I've kind of worked through at this point because I don't, I don't, I mean, we're just here hanging out, aren't we? Yeah. Just, just learning. Hanging out. Just here learning. Creating you know? some things. Creating some things. Um, okay. So let's hope that this like makes sense. Okay. Let's see what happens. No, it did not. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> let's go back in there so i'm gonna go into here go into my warp stab, and see it's like auto scaling to 105 um point four, and i don't want it to so where can i edit this let me see maximum scale 150 what does this one say <laughs> Everybody, we're here and we're <laughs> learning. <laughs> yes. How's everyone feeling in the chat? You guys liking this so far? Learning a lot? Learning I'm learning a lot. End. Oh, good. I thought that's all that matters to me. Yeah. You know, that's all that matters to me. And I'm also learning. Like I said before, I'm like, ooh, we're going to be learning together. Yeah. If anyone knows how I edit the scale i would love to know but i feel like what's gonna happen is okay this is what's gonna happen so i'm just gonna match it and someone's gonna be like no don't do that okay i'm gonna match it and see if this this does anything wait additional scale oh oh oh, oh. okay did something anyway you know what i'm saying don't don't warp stabilize two scenes that you want connected <laughs> or, or at least okay don't warp stabilize a scene that is the same that you have cut into two separates for some odd reason and because you're me don't do that um warp stabilize like as if it's like the first step of your video editing because it's like i don't know like what kind of example i could give but it it, it just sets the tone it's like the foundation so that mm. you don't have to go back and do things and make it more difficult for yourself so make sure that you're doing warp stabilize or or like color correction like basic corrections and stuff like that i feel like um you know, even basic corrections, though, those can even come last sometimes. Yeah. They could, you know. And, but it just depends on, on the, you know, what you're trying to accomplish and what, and, and also your vision so that it makes sense while you're editing. But we're going to jump right into hopefully adding a little filter to this one because. Sweet. I think that it's somewhat ready to an extent. I know we didn't do a lot of these colors and I'm still a clown here, unfortunately. <laughs> she cute. She cute. Looks um, good. And here. Ooh, this one was kind of fun though. 
Yeah. Okay. Wait, should I just do the color change? I'm gonna do a color change here real quick. Yeah, I'd love to see that one because like I real quick. Yeah, yeah, I love the little jump. I think that's a cool <laughs> transition. I agree. I agree. And you know what? I'm not even going to cut the clip and I'm gonna show you how I change the color without Ooh. cutting it because I'm pretty sure that I can do a I'm pretty sure I can do the the little um toggle animation thing that we've been talking about so i'm gonna okay, try cool. and do that and let's see if it works so let's go back color change change to color if i can set my lips all right let's do change the color right over that whole clip and now my first jump to be what do we want our first color to be Blue. Okay, we don't mm -hmm. want it to be blue because we already did blue. Okay. And pop, pop. Okay. That's the one. Okay, I'm not cutting it though. Not cutting it. Okay, so this is where we're going to test the toggle animation. Now, if I do toggle animation here and I do the red front to, um, let's try purple that first time. Mm. See, it does it so quick. I love it. Love it. So cool. I know. And then, okay, so I want to make sure that this too is also toggled because I think that can change in the clip. And, okay. And then now, okay, so we've got our, oh, 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 oh. Okay, oh. so this is where we're, oh, okay, so lesson. lesson. <laughs> okay, so we want to make sure before we do that, that we have one that's not, anything so well, how about i undo 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 and then okay let's go what if i okay this is this is crazy okay toggle this to regular and then i hit the ground and now it must go from red to purple okay please god work no it's not gonna work i think oh my god i did <gasps> yay! Oh, yay perfect <laughs> yay i don't have to cut yes woo, woo, woo. Hey, so hey, 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 hey. that's because you added the keyframes in there is that right that's because i okay. added the keyframe so i wanted to make sure that the the keyframes were already set um for nothing at first because my mess up was, is that I added the keyframes um, to change the color before even adding where it begins from. So mm. I think there's a possibility here to do like some kind of fun gradient thing, even now that Whoa. I'm realizing this, like this could be kind of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there could be a really fun gradient thing where it goes from like a color to like, cause it will slide oh. know, through the keyframe. We Ooh. might need to try that. <laughs> Ooh, honestly? Oh, I wonder if we... Okay, let's see if we... Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay. Um, okay, let's get to our next step then. Because now I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and... Boop. Okay. Don't need to cut. You see me like trying to go cut it because I'm so used to that? Yeah. No cuts, Elise. No cuts. And this one will change to mm, yellow. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> no, what the, what the, what the, what is it? Okay, I'm going to play it. Uh, I'm like playing it so slow. Okay. What the oh. what? <laughs> I'm done. Oh my god. Wow. I didn't even realize that I could do this. <sighs> mm. oh, so wait, ideas. How did that happen? Was it from did you I'm like still kind of confused on like why? Okay, it went from okay, what it Where looks it? like it. But, but how did it go? Well, how did it go from red here? 
again to orange to yellow. That's so crazy. It's, I, I almost think, is it because it, maybe because you set the keyframe <laughs> at the end for yellow? Yeah. And... Did it just like go over the colors like in some kind of rainbow fashion? Oh my God. I'm going to play this again because I'm just like so shocked. That was so exciting. Oh. What in the heck? Okay, I want to see what it, if I do it to green here, then I wonder if it'll. Oh, I didn't even realize I do that a couple times. Boop. Okay. So Fairy said that it's moving the hue bar. Mm. So oh, can... change hue. Hue. I wonder if I change to what? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we're going to try after I, I edit this next color. Wait, is this the yellow? Oh, that was the yellow. Okay, we already did yellow. Okay, we need to do one more. And it's this one. And let me find my keyframe. Let's go. <laughs> Everyone's loving the color change. <laughs> <laughs> they probably love our reactions even more. I know. Like, it's like... <laughs> Oh, it's so great. Our minds. <laughs> okay, this green is like green. I like it though. It's definitely cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm just like, uh -huh. see that. I'm just so I'm just so confused at how this one goes back like to this. I mean, I don't even think this is like my actual color of my jacket. I think it. I wonder if it. I have no idea. I'm so confused. I love how in the video you like look down too as it's yeah color as if you in the video you're like what exactly <laughs> even myself in the video I'm like what yeah let me see what the what yeah that's, that's yeah that's wow tricky. well learn something new there that's so cool. Um, yeah, but I'd love to know how and why that's happen happening. Change by. Hmm. Oh, yeah, we're going to do some more videos with that one for sure. I can't wait to figure that out. I can't wait to have more fun with that one because I mean, like the rate, like you could just do like a whole like just a quick like whole rainbow on yourself. A yeah. Whole rainbow anywhere. A whole rainbow ah. like hue change thing like that's <laughs> tripped out. I love I'm it. Really tripped out. Me too. So cool. Um, okay, so let's now that we've you know we've got the base of our video, and also we were talking a little bit more about how um, you know I, I added this new adjustment layer, and I wanted it to only edit certain parts of this video because only certain parts of this video need those certain adjustments because the adjustments that are needed for this clip for example, are not the same adjustments for this clip because it's just very bright. And that kind of reminds me, let me actually go into here and maybe bring this down. <laughs> oh, we're using the curves. Oh boy. Hi. Maybe uh, we'll have another rainbow effect. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. You know, I also, I did not, I mean, we could do a little rainbow effect here. I wonder when it steps. I step oh my god, once. to see your to see your converse go rainbow. Huh? Like just let's see what happens here. Do, 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 do. I may be making it weird because I'm like locking it in there. I don't know what's happening there. Anyway, okay, red. And then I think I was going like pink or something. Yeah, that goes, that was quick. Yeah. And then, I think I go back regular, but I don't know how I do that. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna highlight these two originals with no color on it. And then I'm gonna paste it in there. I don't think that works. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Wait, I'm gonna highlight these, highlight, highlight. 
Oh, copy. And then I'm going to paste. Yes. Mm. Ooh. Perfect. Wow. She works. Yay. Oh, cool. Okay. So that's a pretty quick way to do those pink. But I wonder, I wonder how that looks. Oh, not too mm. bad. Not too bad. That one's a little quicker. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So now... I am going to add a, another adjustment layer, drag it all the way in the top up there. And I'm going to drag it all the way over the whole thing. Start at the beginning there. And I've got a ton of different LUTs, they call them LUTs, um, L-U-T-S, I believe, you can download them online. Adobe has a lot of um, ones that are, um, that come with Premiere. So I yeah. think there are some in here, like, I think they're called like, I don't know if these are the names, but that's what I see here for now. Um, yeah, but I know, here, I know yeah. a few people in the chat were asking about, how to get the LUTs. And um, I believe a lot of them are already built into Premiere. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good ones are already built in. Or um, you can just search Google and, and find um, some some ones that uh, are, are like made for, are, are kind of copies of like film or copies mm -hmm. of certain movies. Um, or certain things like that. So you can find uh, different effects and different creative things um, that work for you that way. Cool. But the other fun part is you can kind of click through here on the side and preview it on your video. Oh yeah. I don't wanna go through too much. But I have a favorite one. I don't know if it'll work today, but works right now. Chloe. Mm, looks a little dark. That's all right. Pretty sure it was this one. Not bad. I might play a little bit. Colors. Now this yeah. is where it gets a little iffy. Because I am a little afraid to click things. You can see me. I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, like you said, you have the undo button. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Exactly. See, oh, so there's some fun stuff here. You know, it'll kind of tell you what parts of the blues you're selecting or what you're mm. affecting. Um, but I don't think I want to really mess with these right now. I think I want to do anything creative. And then you can kind of, in, in here, um, <clears throat> you can change the int intensity of uh, the filter. So if I wanted to kind of bring this up a lot more, you can kind of tell a little bit more that it's affecting the scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Just a reminder to everyone too, if you're watching this and learning a lot from today's stream, you can always watch these as replays later on and go back and catch anything that you missed, as well as catch up on all of the other replays on behance.net slash Adobe Live. You can learn all day, every day. Yes, you can. Um, there's also options here for faded film. Now this is kind of vibey if you want to get rid of all of like the contrasted feel, if you kind of want a little bit more flat. Now I feel like I kind of did this in my, in the final edit of mine because I, I, I liked it a little bit more vintagey and less uh, contrasted. You can also, ooh, un unsharpen. Um, so let me tell you what I would unsharpen with. This is a key. If you are editing faces or something, or you have a video with yourself <laughs> and it is like sharpened to the max, I just like take a little unsharpen over here to my face and it feels a lot better. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gives it like a, a nice kind of smooth look. Yeah, you don't need all that detail in the skin sometimes. It's a little, it's a little, at least for <laughs> personally, I don't need it. Me, I don't think anyone else needs my detail of that skin. Just a little face tune. Just a little face tune. <laughs> um, okay, so vibrance, maybe boost, get them colors popping. Always want to do the colors popping, feel the saturation. I love working with color. I love it. Still working with the saturation over here. So I'll just keep jumping in and out to different scenes to make sure that when I'm editing, you know, it all kind of makes sense to each clip and each scene. Um, because obviously the way that I'm using this adjustment layer is it's editing the entire video. So um, just want to make sure that it all looks good. And when I look back at this, even I can tell that this edit looks great on here too. So yeah. happy about that. That saturation, you can do a little tint. Don't know if I want to use that, but again, you can double click and kind of see um, uh, it just go back to zero, which is nice. And the curves, like I said, I'm not touching that today. But <laughs> oh, so there's it's also this fun thing. It's there's like face detection in here. Um Ooh. which I don't know if we're if we need to use obviously in this one, but um gosh, I forgot what it does too, but it has something to do with um matching something gosh <laughs> <laughs> i helped so much <laughs> i wish i could help something <laughs> it did something cool <laughs> for sure um okay so you know we've got our video it's uh it's pretty good you know one thing we're missing though can anybody guess can you guess anna yeah can missing? you guys guess I don't know. Mm -hmm. What is it? We don't have any sound. Ah, no sound at all. Duh. No sound. <laughs> um, so the nice part about uh, Adobe Premiere Pro is that besides this Lumetri color panel, which I I don't think people are going to have this open when they go into um, the editing workspace, like we were talking about in the earlier part of this live I was telling you that there's different ways to work in this uh, in Adobe Premiere Pro because you can click up here and different workspaces will come up um but with this I have Lumetri Color open and I have the Essential Sound panel open um but if you want and they're not open in yours you go up here window mm -hmm. and find them here okay and you can open any different panel that's closed that is available in any of these workspaces up there so you don't have to keep changing workspaces to get certain panels to come up you can just add them in you can also save your workspace so save a new workspace that works for you specifically or you can reset to something that is already there so just a so quick good little, to know yeah just a little quick workspace but in the essential sound panel here, um, we've got some great stuff. Adobe just added like all these, these uh, Adobe stock sounds. And yeah, it just makes it look so much easier for, for us to kind of pick and choose music and, and vibes and things that we want to add to our, our video. And so we've got moods here. I mean, if, if I'm angry, which I don't, I hardly am. <laughs> if I want an angry sound, you know, you can choose angry, atmospheric, dramatic, dreamy, all down the line. I'm pretty sure I like a good happy every now and then. I got a good smile. We'll pick happy. Yeah. Or inspiring, you know, but this can really set the tone for your video and how you want it to feel, how you want people to uh, take it in because all the senses matter when it comes to creating. And that's part of the reason why I love playing with video is I get to, to tap into another sense beyond just, um, you know, the emotional kind of, of sort. Exactly. Um, 
And, and just so every, everyone knows, you can also pair this with um, epidemic sound too, which yes. is pretty cool. Yes. I love epidemic sound. Yeah. Um, they have uh, all like these little sound effects that I need. I wonder if I can go search it in here, actually. I don't know yet. Um, that is the question. Sound effects. I, I think the, there's only songs right now. But I would like sound effects in there. That'd be nice. Um, okay, so there's genres. You can pick different things. I always go with a good hip hop, old school. Yes. Sets the vibe, you know. But if you want to go with like the electronic, like, duh, 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 you know, <laughs> that's good too. That works here. And different types of filters. You can pick the, uh, change the tempo change the duration you can say you know vocals and then again epidemic sound or um you know having different partners involved is uh really helpful yeah or the merrier yeah exactly you know um so for this one i don't know what i chose but what I decided specifically was to uh, make each scene have a different song to it, just to change the element or change the atmosphere, so to say. And um, the fun part about this is that if I go back to the beginning of this video and instead of like buying all of these songs to test, you know, um, I can hit play here and it will mm, give me a sample before I want to buy it. Before I ah, wanna... that's so great. Right? And so you can just keep clicking in all of these and it'll give you all these different little vibes if you want to just check. Mm. So just jam out. Yeah, and just see how they work. So I, I just kind of go through and keep tapping and catching the mode catching the mood seeing which one works but i'm just gonna go ahead and drag this one just for example sake and then i'm gonna go to the side cut it at my clip right here just right there where it ends if you wanted to zoom in you can see the nice part about it this is it you know, when you have this uh, razor tool, it makes it easier where there's already cuts to kind mm -hmm. of make a cut. Um, so I just cut that music there, clear the rest of the clip. I might just do the same with another one. And so Coming on together. and so forth. Yes. Now, sure, I've got my music. It's fantastic. But um, I've got some options here if I would like to uh, play with the music, if I want to play with the sound effects and stuff like that. Um, and we have music right now. And I'm just going to do this for example's sake because we don't have any vocals um but if we did and we we and i haven't added my snap yet which i should mm. and uh, that would be our sound effect but i'm just gonna do this real oh, quick yeah. so this is music and when i go to the edit tab here i'm just gonna clear this again just to show you so in the essential sound panel in the edit tab when I'm clicked on my, my music or on my sound or whatever it is, you have different opportunities to assign a tag to that audio type, right? Mm. So there's different options, whether you have dialogue, whether you have music, sound effects, or ambience. Depending on what you choose, you have different options to or different presets. Um, so if I wanted to, I can make this music sound like it's balanced background music, or I can duck it against everything, um, or hard vocal ducking or smooth vocal ducking. Now, if you haven't heard of what a ducking is, a duck is basically when the music turns down in order for something else to um, 
play or be heard. And so because we don't necessarily have any vocals or I haven't added my um, snap quite yet, we can't really see um, how it ducks, but you can see here on the panel on the right that there's different options for ducking. And if I wanted to duck against um, dialogue, if I wanted to duck against music clips, if I wanted to duck against sound effects, blah, 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 you can unclick these, unclick, click, click, um, and change the sensitivity, change the ducking amount, and change the way it fades. Um, and this is very helpful, especially when you are, um, when you've decided that the the other clips in your in your timeline are you know dialogue so to speak so for example um i wonder if i can like record my voice real quick let's see what happens mm, that would let's be cool that. yeah let's just try that <clears throat> i'm like <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> i always do the same thing before recording anything <clears throat> as if i haven't been like talking for the last like <laughs> two hours <whatever>. exactly <laughs> <clears throat> okay <laughs> i love that i love that love you it. do that <laughs> oh here we are time hey, hey we're, we're testing, testing and, and we're recording, recording the audio, audio. This, this is fun, fun. <laughs> okay okay let's see oh love the echo <laughs> <laughs> that is funny um okay so We've got my, oh, so I hope the audio sounded right on your end. Let's hope. Um, okay, so we've got my my vocals. And you've noticed, like I was talking about, we've got our tags here. I'm in the essential sound, my edit. And I'm going to click dialogue. And it's giving me all types of presets here. I can choose. Now, I don't know what a Walla Walla is. Background Walla Walla. But I respect it. <laughs> So if that's your choice, I'm so curious. Or I know we too. Should we try it? Okay. Yeah, definitely. We get to find out. Let's see. Oh, okay. So, but the first time before we figure out what Walla Walla is, let me make sure that we're ducking against dialogue. And I don't need. We don't need to duck against anything else because that's not what we need to do. But I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we've got our dialogue set. And I'm gonna click generate keyframes. And you'll notice on the left here that there's like these little dots that have mm -hmm. been created. I think that's where our ducking is gonna happen, mm. right? Where our vocals happen, I think here, 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 here. Something, something happens here, here. Okay, let's see if it works. Um, and then let's see what the Walla Walla sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're testing and we're recording the audio. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so cool. It does sound cool. It sounds like auto match it and make sure that it it that it sounds right. Oh, hey, we're weird. testing and we're recording the audio. This is fun. <laughs> Yeah, it goes back to normal there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, we did it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> My, that little vocal. You know, it's so, I love it. This is it's fun. It's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I don't know how it sounds to you, but to me, like, it sounds like it was recorded in an auditorium. It has like, this, it? like, space to it. I think it, oh, because that's the Walla Walla. Oh, is it already applied? Is that the Walla Walla? Yes, it is already applied. Let's listen ah. again. Come on. Let me reanalyze. Hey, hey, we're testing and we're recording the audio. It does. <laughs> wow. Wait, now I'm curious if it would sound like something else. Wait, who, what else would we want to do? Maybe oh, from yeah, the radio. Yeah. The radio would be fun. Oh, this is awesome. Hey, we're testing <laughs> and we're recording the audio. This is fun. <laughs> oh. That's so cute. <laughs> it sounds so good. 
<laughs> Why do I love that? Like, I want to take care of the little, little radio me. Like, <laughs> I know. Oh my God. That's so great. Wait, what else is there? I'm so intrigued. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, from a telephone. Oh, oh my God. This is, a, this is going to be funny. Hey, we're testing and we're recording the audio. <laughs> this is fun. Yes. <laughs> I cry when I laugh, so there's tears like, really, like <laughs> <in> my <eyes. laughs> oh my god, I'm just loving like the oh change god. of the. This is fun. I know, it's so cute. I know. I wonder. I wonder if would happen if I cut this, and if the, the if I generate the keyframes, and if the music would come up. Oh, see, there's more keyframes that just came up mm. because there's more silence there. So I'm just gonna see just for example's sake hey we're testing and we're recording the audio this is fun ah, you see how it like yeah come, come yeah so that yeah that's a really really fun easy way to you know edit sound and make it I love easier it. for yourself so that you're not out here hard you know ducking and making sure that your your voice is heard it just make yeah. sure so that, that you uh that, that makes it that makes so sense. much easier. I know. That was fun. I'm like, I'm like coming down from the high of that. that I great. know. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get <laughs> in from here. And- <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm going to start just like playing with the little sound effects and be like, oh, I can make myself sound like, hello. <laughs> right. I'm honestly, I'm like obsessed with this telephone sound. I'm I not know. sure there's anything better than this telephone I sound. I know. Now, oh, podcast voice sounds pretty. Wait, from television, we just have to try just Ooh. because I need to be on TV. Hey, we're testing and we're recording yeah. the audio. It doesn't really, it's, it's not like that different. This, yeah, it sounds <laughs> kind of like the same as the radio almost. Yeah. Heard that, been there before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that radio effect was so great. We're like, ah! I know. Um, but yeah, you can do the same with any other things so you do the same with the music here um but the same can be done say for example if this is a sound effect you know um just clearing that audio type going to sound effect here choosing that preset and then you can go back here and adding um the sound effect was it this no this is sound effect right here and so that will also duck from that good stuff Yes. Wonderful. Um, let me see if I could find the sound effect in here. I don't know if we, I don't know if they have it yet. Snap. <gasps> Wait, no, that, that oh. might be just a song. <laughs> Snap. Oh, yeah, you would think finger. there would be. I think they only have music right now, but mm. I'm like, like oh, when they get them sound effects in there or the ambiance, I'm like yeah. all about ambiance. I love like like in a lot of my um, like actual art work without my face in it or, or other things. Um, that stuff I always have like very realistic sounds like waterfalls or rain or yeah. stuff like that that I, I love to capitalize on. Yeah, I feel like that always really makes the image or mm-hmm. video clip. You know, mm-hmm. it does. It really does. Um, yeah, I mean, the video is somewhat pretty much done, you know, I mean, there's a lot more we could do to it, obviously, when it comes, oh, gosh, look at, I'm looking at this again. Oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, so cool. <laughs> it's like something happening there, though. If I do full, I think it might. Yeah, it looks better. So amazing. <laughs> And I don't have, oh. yeah, we have, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Um, that was fun. Yeah. Thanks. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, does, I mean, does anybody else have any questions or anything? I'm super happy to like re go over anything or say anything more or talk about like anything about this. Yeah, let us know. We have about a little less than 10 minutes left here. So if you have any questions for Elise or want her to go over anything again, uh, feel free to pop in the chat and let us know. Nice. And 
Let's see. Maybe we could look at your final video again and and maybe you could just kind of talk about like anywhere where you did things really well that we were kind of like experimenting with today, like places where you match cut um Mm -hmm. and like your color. Let's review. Let's do what we did today. Yeah. Yes. Love it. Yes, I agree. Okay. So today we did a lot. I'm not gonna lie, we did a whole lot. And I'm gonna be honest, this video took me a lot longer than what we did today. I'm so sure bless you guys. <laughs> 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 you got the fun part. Yes. Um so what we did is we made sure that we uh had some fun looping transitions. And to accomplish that, most importantly, I made sure that we had this little loop playback turned on and it's turned off right now, which you may have noticed because I tried to play the video and it stopped at a black screen and it just went like that and it didn't loop back. But what we want is to see how that video is gonna look on the internet because most videos keep playing. And so I wanna make sure that that makes sense at the end. Um, But so with that being said, what we did was we made sure that we cut every clip um, right where it met up with the next clip and all the motions needed to match. So for this fine example, I might hide this real quick. Um, this one, I just went and smacked the camera a certain direction and made sure that that same direction happened at my next location and I caught it at the end. So I finished that, that loop. Oh, that music is kind of funny. (laughs) (laughs) It just like tails off. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um yeah so so we 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 just make sure that we have the same kind of motion and that that motion um excuse me i got a little <laughs> runny nose allergy season coming up. yeah um and it's happening actually i say coming up as if i'm not dying right now i know um <laughs> so this has been cut using this razor tool here and making sure that it has the same kind of motion i don't know if that song's working here so i'm <laughs> gonna get rid of it it's like very serene it's like, it's like someone's like <laughs> <laughs> oh it's not the mood we're going for see this is where oh is it this is where inspiring gets unclicked <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so funny um So we matched, we did our little matches, also did, I was also talking about the fact that um, I wanted to make sure that when you do match, sometimes even certain matches, you need to consider, you know, movements. Hold on, let me change this because this is what our our issues go. I'm going to change this from playback full to playback fourth so that it it played back a little, a lot smoother. And that's something you can do too on your own computer um, to make sure that when you're editing, you're not, you know, trying to push through your video and it actually plays and it makes sense so you can see what you're doing. Um, and that can be accomplished by just reducing your playback. And if you want to, I may to go back to eighth, but I think we're cute at the fourth here. Yeah. Um, but something I wanted to keep in mind is that you see how my foot steps on this right on this left here and then it goes to the right. So I think it's it ends on the left actually. Left boom. And so I want to make sure that even in that clip coming up next that it matches in that that left foot that left foot mm. that was something so good. we thought in mind or kept in mind um just to keep the 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 watch or the you know the person who's watching in in tune with the story versus the edit or whatever you're, whatever else you're trying to accomplish um so yeah that was one transition tip and then also we did change to color, which was our most important. Let's just show you right here. Now, I showed you an example. You could cut the clip 
and it may make it a little easier, but that's a problem when it comes to using warp stabilizer, which we were trying to use um, by making the, the, the video a lot more smooth and stabilized. But um, I cut the clip and so it made it difficult. But um, anyway, the change to color effect here, very helpful. Show you real quick how it works just in case you missed it earlier drag this see you notice in the effects tab here we've got change to color if you go to um, video effects go to obsolete go to change to color here drag and drop on the frame or on the clip and go on down here in this effects controls Grab that eyedropper, grab the color you want to, oh no, we don't want to change that color. We're not doing that color this time. Let's go <laughs> back, back, back. Okay, we're going to change this yellow here. And it changes the red really quickly because I've already been playing with red um, in some other, in, in this actual program. So I think there's something that it's picking up, but um, if you want to just, you know, make sure that it's really changing to red change your from to here and we've got our change oh amazing Hello. well wrapping up here um oh, any yes. last things we have like two more minutes so um anything you want to share elise are you feeling good oh i'm like so happy this has been so much fun it's going by so quick i feel like i, I know got, i had like so many other videos to go through but i was trying to also <laughs> stall because i didn't want to start a new video right at, the I know. Or right at the end but um thank you so much for for joining us and i hope you guys join us tomorrow because this is just the beginning yes come back tomorrow join us at 9 30 pacific time or 12 30 eastern time and we will see you for part two we're going to be doing a little photoshop and premiere is that correct correct all right we will see everyone then thank you so much for joining us today we appreciate you all <laughs> bye